And I pass on the word to Dörte Stahl. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I think this is a very, very interesting project. Um, I like to share is my screen to you so that you can have a look at the presentation. Um, <clears throat> you will find an um, oops, something more detailed and a more detailed handout to this presentation on the website of the project. So there are some topics um, I will go a little bit faster through and you can you have the possibility to dive deeper into the whole thing. So don't worry. <laughs> um, critical thinking is for me, as Martin said, I'm a freelance trainer and I deal a lot of social media and with digital learning scenarios. So it, it really has become a topic since several years. And I thought, why do people have this kind of not really um, reflected information? Why do they just talk what they read? And I really tried to go into the whole thing and I figure out something <laughs> what is maybe not only of interest to me. I think it's of interest to whole adult learning and adult education. And I like to really, I'm really happy to have the opportunity to share it here. Um, so this is my agenda, what I like to present to you. So I like to go from why we do need new competences up to this, how to implement critical thinking as one of one of special competences into adult learning. And <clears throat> as I said, when, when, when you have questions, um, I will have two little stops, really small stops where you may can put some questions. And after my presentation, we will do a little break and then we can, after that, answer some more questions. And then maybe you have interest, are interested in doing some group work and we can enter these breaking, breakout rooms. So this is my idea where I like to start. The first thing is why do we need competence, the special competence for the 21st century. And it is what you probably know, <laughs> it is about digital transformation and it changes the world. It's the world of work for, for the most. It's professions, workplaces, and the way how and also where we work will completely change. We are right now at the first steps of this kind of transformation. And this transformation through digital technologies, they will have, they still already have, and they will have a deep, deep impact into our everyday life. It's furthermore the way we communicate and we interact. And that causes, of course, some problems like mass communication via social media is difficult because there is um, information overload. We are flooded by information and the speed of dissemination is so fast that we as human beings usually not used to that. And that causes <clears throat> problems like fake news, conspiracy theories, and hate speech, and new ways of insulting other people. If you manipulate pictures, if you manipulate voices, you have completely different ways to attack other people in, in, their, in, their, in their private being. So um, <clears throat> other consequences of the digital transformation are there's the ex extensive possibilities for state surveillance, and many people feel that. Um, and it's also a very complex globalized economy. I mean, even if you are very well educated, it becomes more and more difficult to understand how economic works and how one thing goes together with another and where are differences and where it all goes together. So it is really a topic. It's not, not easy. And therefore, <clears throat> digital transformation is one driver for new competencies. But 
we also now deal with climate change. We need to deal with or find ways to become climate neutral states in societies. And there is a question of migration. Living in diverse societies is a very, very huge challenge. And <clears throat> That is what we need to see, that we live in an area of change. And therefore, we need <clears throat> different other or new, not really new, but other competences. We need to have another focus on competences. If we still like to shape the world we live in, if we still like to influence our societies and our private lives so that we not, not are being overwhelmed and, and over flooded by all these kinds of changes. And these changes will affect everyone in Europe and in the whole world. So <clears throat> we need to cope with all that. And that is quite difficult. And um, since the beginning of this century, um, institutions started thinking about what do we need, what kind of competences do we need. They started to describe them so that, that we find competences or skills that meet the requirements for, first, it was only digital transformation. Um, and one result I'd like to present to you is uh, called the 21st Century Skills Framework. <laughs> um, it is an initiative by the OECD in cooperation at, um, with governmental and private organizations and also with companies. And all these organizations and institutions, they came from the United States. It's called Partnership for the 21st Century Skills and it was first published in two, 2008. So it's not very new, but I like to show it to you. It looks first of all that way. Um, there are three areas of competences and one, and that is important, one area is learning and innovation. And there we met first the four C's. It's the first time we met them that clear <clears throat> and going together with the idea of we need to work because there is a lot of change. <laughs> um, it's critical thinking and it goes together with problem solving, it's creativity, it goes together with innovation, it's communication and collaboration. Um, and they become very famous, these four C's. And <laughs> um, what we need to see is this was new. It maybe sounds not new, but it was new in the way that these competences were meant for everyone, for the many and not only for the few. Critical thinking, for example, is something very, very old. Um, it is for, since a long time that it is part of university studies, thinking critical for university studies. But this goes out to everyone, this framework, and is, uh, the aim is to implement these skills in school. <clears throat> so for the many in all schools, not only in private schools, not only in higher education, for everyone. And here you have a maybe if you like to um, <clears throat> a short overview on what the rest competence and competence fields are digital literacy and career and of and career and life and here we see what also what is criticized on this special framework um the criticism was that this primarily addresses the needs of the working world the needs of companies and um, in the establishing of that framework, many, many huge, very well-known um, companies were involved. And so that causes, of course, <clears throat> some discussions because there is a strong, very strong focus on that. But it was the first time that it was mentioned and the idea was going out to everyone with these competence. Everyone needs to improve learning and also digital literacy and rest. Mm. 
But within the ex increasing challenges, um, we see that the world of several institutions have developed further broad-based competence concept. Um, it's now what we can see, it goes more from competences for the world of work to competences for life. And I think that is what we definitely need. That's my personal opinion, <laughs> because I think we are not only working people. <laughs> we are not only workers. We, we, we don't live for work. We don't live for, comp for companies. Um, <clears throat> And therefore, one, or, uh, one framework, another concept, I would say, is an OECD project that is called Future of Education and Skills 2030. Um, and they invented a very complex learning compass. Um, I don't want to go deeper into it because this is, I think, the most differentiated and detailed framework or <laughs> whatever we like to call I've ever seen but it has one disadvantages for us here in our context it is made for schools it really addresses education in schools it addresses formal educational settings and so adult education is to a large extent non-formal and our participants are not pupils, they are adults. And that's the huge, huge difference. And therefore we can be lucky that I can present something different to you, something else. And this is the European oh, framework for personal, social and learning to learn key competences. This is from 2020. <laughs> um, also, this is a very complex, uh, very complex framework, and I'm not convinced on each and every part of this framework. But what we see is that one area of competence is learning to learn. Learning, learning to learn, self-learning competences are definitely central, central for our future lives, for our lives today for coping with changes and for the future where the changes will get more and more and more. <clears throat> so we see that collaboration, communication in this framework belongs to social competences. And they say critical thinking includes creativity and then they work a lot on creativity. Yes, that's wonderful. <laughs> we can put it that way. Um, Important on this life comp framework is, even if I have a lot of criticism on that, but it is really for the many. And it is really for us as people with an holistic view on us. We are not only working people, we are not only private, we are not only parents, we are not only whatever. We, we have so <clears throat> such, we are so wide and bright. We are just human beings. And this um, framework likes to address that and therefore I think it is worth having a look at it and oops <clears throat> it's it's for all and and that is that is important but whatever frame there are more frameworks and if you really like to go into it <laughs> it's 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 interesting, but it's also kind of exhausting with dealing with these frameworks um, there are more frameworks, you find them in the handout, don't worry. So you have many possibilities really to dive deep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but what we need to see talking about competences for the 21st century, <clears throat> regardless where these four C's are mentioned, where they are placed, in which framework, they usually all belong to learning in a whole or in a large part. So learning is really a, a point um, <clears throat> and is become more and more, more and more, oops, more, I need to, to move around some uh, little, little uh, pictures here <laughs> because I'd like to show you something more. Um, so they are, the four C's are very important because they belong to learning and therefore it affects adult education and adult learning. 
I like to show you some components to illustrate you um, the four C's, what they mean. And now they should come from here. Yeah. So you don't need to read it all. Um, you may read it all, but you don't need to read it all. What I like to show you is that this collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking, um, they belong together. None of this stands alone. If I say collaboration is about work with diverse teams, it's not only work with teams, it's working with diverse teams, then of course, you need to artic articulate your thoughts. You need to be able to describe problems. If not, you cannot articulate them. And then you go here. Um, if you, <clears throat> it belongs to creativity and to critical thinking, if you're open to new concepts and perspective, you can questioning and you, in order to analyze, you can judge, you can decide all the things. So it all <clears throat> goes together. They, these competencies, they are interconnected and they complement each other. That does not mean that they don't have any standalone components. They have, of course, and we will now look a little bit more deeper into into critical thinking, but always keep in mind, they all belong together. There is no critical thinking without having an understanding of variety of communication strategies. If you cannot articulate, articulate your thoughts and your opinions, you don't need critical thinking <laughs> because then it's only in your head and not in the rest of the world. <laughs> So, so it, it really goes together and be open is part of critical thinking, you will see this and collaboration means to deal with different people. <clears throat> and so it all belongs together. So are there any questions up to now? You may write them in the chat. You don't have to, but, but you may, <laughs> but you may. So I don't want to, to read too much that in the end, but I don't see anything in the chat. We have no. no questions in the chat yet. Wonderful, wonderful. But give me the second to drink something. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, this was the first part. And now we will have a look at critical thinking. What is that? It goes together with everything else, uh, with the rest of the three C's, but um, it has a meaning in particular. So, and to figure out what critical thinking is, it's nice to have a look on what it is not. So it's not thinking or talking a lot about something. It's not thinking the whole day. <laughs> it's not questioning in a negative sense it is questioning so but not always questioning ne negative um, to this way of how and when and why questioning um, I will, will reveal you a little model on critical thinking so it's not simply criticizing something I mean that's easy that is what we see in social media it just criticized something. Everything, <laughs> most times everything <laughs> is to be criticized there. Um, but that is not critical thinking. And what we need to see is it, it is not just about being able to identify misin misinformation. Critical thinking means more. Um, identifying uh, misinformation, fake news, and all these things. This is just one outcome. It's an important outcome, but it's just one outcome. So it's not the first thing we actually should work on. Um, I like to, <laughs> to do a little experiment with you. Um, you see here um, uh, a small piece of 
<laughs> this is a small room. And I like you to, to 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 look at it and maybe you write in the chat. It would be wonderful if you write and said, what do you see? What what does this picture present to you? What does it feature? And why? Why? Why do you have an impression? What could that be? And so what what do these lines tell you? Maybe and, and and maybe it reminds you on something you have seen before and you can tell us why you think this is I don't know why. Please use the chat. Maybe you you see something. I will uh Do you see something? Um, I hope. We have some participants. Okay. Answered. I will have a look. <clears throat> I will stop the, the sharing. Ah, okay. Someone sees a bird. Um. <laughs> Another one sees a bird, an animal, an animal. Due to the shape, yes, that is the why. Due to the shape, you think it's it's also a bird. Okay, that's interesting. You see birds. I'm not sure whether it's a bird. I, I have no idea what it is. Does anyone see something else? Some sort of cow. Very good. This is something quite different. Why do you see buffalo horse? Another buffalo horse. Very interesting. Um, I mean, there's a slice difference between a pig, a bird, and a buffalo horse. Can <laughs> I mean, it's just a slice different, maybe, but some creatures under a microscope, you are wonderful. Four legs. Four legs is goes out to the buffalo horse, I think, or the cow, and the pig, maybe. A sheep with a funny tail. Actually, this comes very close to it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Thank you. we will stop that. But you did something um, while 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 writing, while looking at at the picture and writing and and writing also why you have an idea on something. You something happened uh, in your mind. Um, the oops, I got back to the presentation. No, not here. Um, sorry, here's my little things. I don't, I actually don't know. It is, a, it is a mixture between a sheep and I think an elephant. This was a task, it was a sheep, an elephant and something else. I have forgotten what it is. <laughs> um, but I will come to um, to the, to your results. Um, I will relate to that within the presentation. Thank you for for doing that, and I thank you for sharing your your thoughts. This is this is really nice. Um, <clears throat> so, critical thinking, in particular, means several things. It is questioning. It is questioning to get a comprehensive picture of something, an opinion, an idea, and a problem. And this is what you, you just tried. You, you looked at it. It was a picture. But you looked at it and what is it all about? So to me, it was never a bird because I missed the wings. But it's just my way of watching at this. <laughs> um, so a buffalo cow is very interesting, but the, it, it looks a little bit like a bird, of course. So it's, you try to compare things and try to get a comprehensive picture. Um, and it means, of course, reflecting most critically, and it means not accepting everything one reads, one hears, one sees as indisputable facts. We have 
if we deal not with misinformation, if we deal with conspiracy theories, it seems a little bit like that these are people who um, don't take everything as indisputable facts. Um, what I heard last, I don't know what it is in your countries, but what is discussed there, but here it is, if you get uh, recognized due to the pandemic, <clears throat> due to COVID, um, then you get a chip inside. And the chip comes directly from Bill Gates. And if you want to, I mean, this is this is this is really the, the, the people um, don't take everything as an indisputable fact because to me it is an indisputable fact that Mr. Bill Gates will not ship me um, because he is not interested in my private life. Uh, so <laughs> when people say this. They seem to be critical thinkers, but they do not reflect critically and they do not get a comprehensive picture of the whole. That is a problem. Um, and critical thinking is, and I think that is really important, it's a process and it's a deliberated process. And this process is often unconscious, of course, as when we used and trained in critical thinking, it's really unconscious, but but there is a process. And now, so, a world without critical thinking would be no development, no innovation. And that goes out to, to all these conspiracy theories. Um, they are not critical thinking in a way that they invent something, that they pattern the world. This is really not what they do. Um, critical thinking means far more. It has usually a purpose. It has an aim. So without critical thinking, the world is definitely not spherical. It was still be flat. No rights, no no civil rights movement, no internet, no mobile phones, no electricity. Everything we enjoy <laughs> um, would probably not there. Not everything, but many things we enjoy, like I said, going to cinema, movies, lots of things in culture, will not have been there without critical thinking. So it is important. I have. Um, Little um, example for you. It is fictitious only to a certain extent because actually I read it on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter bubble um, is a very educated Twitter bubble. <laughs> and there was an initiative to open up our public libraries on Sunday because most libraries are closed. The public libraries are closed on Sunday. And one answer from my very well-educated <laughs> bubble was, why? <laughs> um, I don't know anyone who goes to a public library. No? And, and no one should work on Sunday. No one should work on Sunday is, is an argument, okay, it belongs to the union and development of the unions. This is more or less serious, but I don't know anyone who goes to a library. That is not an argument in, in terms of critical thinking. Critical thinking would be more who demands this, who, what kind of initiative is that? And if you're not convinced on public libraries and if you don't know anyone who goes there, then you may ask questions like, yes, staff costs are high on Sunday, so can my can my city pay for it? I, I live in a very poor city, so they probably cannot. And how many people use libraries? So is it, is it only for a few people? Is it only for some old ladies? Two or five? Or, or will there really come 10 or 50 or hundreds of people um, as arguments uh, museums are open on Sunday, supermarkets are closed. What what does it different mean for libraries? And so so this is more arguing, it's more reflective. And that is what critical thinking means in particular. I 
try to reveal to you that critical thinking is a process and an un <clears throat> oh what to say um it is like 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 undisputable yes this is undisputable and you have a process you have a model so we don't need models <laughs> all the time but in this case uh, i think it is important to use a model to get more into what is critical thinking and then not not only for for revealing a model that is that is not my intention my intention is to have a model where i can draw conclusions for adult education what can we do to foster finally critical thinking how can we support that we need to to have a look at several components what it is about and this is what i like to do now and therefore i use this model there of course are more models but this is very well known model and the first part is description and description you ask questions what where why um when you when you write an information reason information you can question what is the information about who wrote it when you read something about uh, a problem then it's more um what is the problem about when was this problem or this issue came up when did it happen or so um it always goes out to describing problems so describing the problem is something very, very important. And I personally, and maybe we can discuss this later, I personally have a little bit the expression that many people lack the ability of describing clear some problems, some issues. They maybe can repeat that, but they cannot describe really. So this is what I think. <laughs> um, and next step in critical thinking is the analysis. And there you ask questions like how, what, and what if. Um, this is, um, you ask for why is something discussed? Is there um, an alternative way to act an alternative method um, or what are the what are the factors the contributing factors and what is if i so with the libraries what are the contributing factors um, museums are open libraries not supermarkets are closed so how does it go together and when i remove or replace one factor how is the whole situation then um when you have the little picture you <laughs> you try to figure it out um uh, maybe if the 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 legs would be shorter it would be a complete different picture um maybe then it would be more a pig or so so different components just make it and analysis is to look what will happen if we replace or remove one of these factors. So this is the next step. And the last step, of course, is evaluation. And evaluation is asking, so what or what next? And it really goes out to is this information or is this problem that is revealed to me has it is it relevant is there any relevance for me and for the problem i deal with and that is what i think really a, a point especially if we look at social media um this information mass information flooding um leads to so many information that most of the information is completely irrelevant for any problem. So let's say uh, young ladies um, who like to shape in their body, this is, a, this is really a topic on Instagram. Um, okay, they can do sports. That's a good way, I think, I think to be discussed um, and they can do several kinds of diets um, 
there are all these recommendations to eat less sugar, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat that. And if you look at what they really eat and drink, then you sometimes see that the drinking is the most, let's say, the largest sugar problem. In the most drinks, you find more sugar than in bread or in cheese or in what else. So the most or many, many, many of these posts are definitely irrelevant for shaping up your body. Maybe you should look a little bit on the amount of red wine you think because there is a lot of sugar. And, and this is so going to relevance is important for adult education if you like to find some conclusion on what, what it is about for adult education in critical thinking. Um, this process is unconscious, of course, and is not strictly linear. We, we can start with analyzers and then go to description and finally we figure something out and that is evaluation. Um, but it is, this model was made for higher education, of course. Um, but it is suitable for adult education because we can draw some conclusions. And this is what I like to do in the next step. So what can, what, what kind of meaning can a model have for us in our really practical world, work? So. Just you should break. Um, some possible conclusions for adult learning are, for example, what, what a critical thinker is. What, critical thinkers are usually open minded and they are curious. So the question for adult education is how can we foster that? And they do not just start from their own experience or emotions. This is but the library example. This was starting first of all from, from a private point of view. I don't know anyone who goes to a library. And this is not critical thinking. Um, we usually start from our private life and that's absolutely okay. There's just no, 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 no problem on that. But it should be not only our private life. <laughs> so we should look at our neighbors and classmates and friends or so. Um, not, not, our, not, not only our experiences and, and emotions. Um, critical thinkers look for evidence. Um, but and, and arguments, but not only for the, the, the shake of looking for evidence, they do this for supporting their points. Um, critical thinking is a lot about independent thinking. I personally believe, I cannot, I cannot prove that, um, but I personally believe um, this is one point uh, for critical thinking is not being has for a long time not been part in in um, in the usual school education. It was only for higher education, meant for higher education, and it was taught in, in universities. Now it is taught far more in schools. But so independent thinkers are a little bit suspicious, I would say. Uh, they could question governments and so. Mm -hmm. But that is would actually critical thinking is goes out to. Um, so we don't look only for evidence because evidence is nice. That is science. Um, we look for evidence and arguments to support our points. And of course, and that is, I think, the most difficult thing. Um, uh, critical thinkers are willing to change long held beliefs. Um, I mean, this is a model, or not a model, but, but this, is, this is an idol. Uh, you can be so well educated and you can be so open minded and you can be so curious, but changing long held beliefs 
what you learned from, from a child from early years. I mean, this is this is very difficult, very, very difficult. But with all these changes, not only digital transformation, if you look for for climate changes, ways to 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 live climate neutral, if we go for migration, what that makes with our societies, if they get more and more diverse, I think we will need to change some of our long hold beliefs. But that is really, that's really a point. Uh, that's really demanding. Um, Critical thinkers might be very challenging for adult educators, for all educators, for teachers and adult educators and trainers, um, because our information and our methods or approaches, they can be questioned and we need to deal with that. I think we should be open to that because it's wonderful and usually we, we are able to explain why there is group work, why there is test, why uh, we choose this method, why we reveal um, that information. I think usually we can explain that. But if, but if critical thinking would, be, would become a huge part in, in adults' life and more and more adult learners would be good critical thinkers, of course, they would question us and they, well, they would challenge us. Uh, I think it's not bad. <laughs> it can be exhausting, yes, of course, but we, I think we should really be open to that. Duh. Um, other conclusions um, from a model what would I try to reveal to you? Other conclusions are um, what do critical thinkers need? So if we, if we think that critical thinking is wonderful, <laughs> or it, it is not maybe not wonderful, but it is helpful, helpful for individuals and helpful for societies and that it is a little bit it just gives us shelter for too much disinformation and all the problems these disinformation um, follows then we need to think about what are the needs for critical thinking so what can how can we foster that not not, not really how but but it's what do they need um so they need the ability to describe problems, really to describe, not just saying yes or no, or I'm not interested. There is a problem, describe it, yeah? and not describe your own life. This is, I think, one point. Um, the next point is, and here we come again, um, it's awareness of value of other opinions, approaches, whatever. Um, in order, in order to develop and, edu and advocate your own opinion. So it is not only being aware or having an understanding of the value of other approaches or other opinions. It's not only appreciate something, it usually has an aim. If we talk of critical thinking, there it has a name. Um, we value other opinions because if we reflect on them, we can support our own arguments. Many people do not know that. That's sad, but it is that way. <laughs> and so I think this is this is really a point um, that is interesting for adult education, because if people don't know that it is fruitful for their own life, um, then they usually no, not usually, but but then some will don't value other opinions. But if we tell them it has several impacts of you, then maybe they get a little bit more open. Um, and of course, the critical thinkers need to understand the difference between relevance or irrelevance on information. 
and you need to be open minded and and all these little steps to to get that um but this is also something uh that adult education can build on what i think um is is uh very important point is the last one mm, the awareness that you can present your position opinion proposals more confident if they have an analytical foundation so if you think critical you think in a more logic analytic way and then you have a better ground, you stand on a better ground. And if you stand on a better ground, uh, then first thing is you get more, you become just more confident. This, it is just that way. Um, but the other thing is people listen more to you. They take you more serious. You, you get more heard. And that is something that is very, very fruitful. And it is a very positive outcome of critical thinking. And usually, um, if we talk on um, critical thinking, or let's, let's say we talk about misinformation or fake news, we just argue against it. Um, and we say, you don't see this, you don't see this, you don't see this. Um, it is very difficult, not in the social media is next to impossible, but, but it, it's actually very difficult to, to reveal the fruitfulness of analytics and having, having a really um, reflecting way of looking at things. But it, is, it has a, a very positive effect on one's everyday life. And so maybe this is something where adult education can build on. So we're going going a little bit more to this, what it makes with, with the people. Um, that it is really fruitful for everyday life, not for your communication on WhatsApp or so. No, for your everyday life. This is maybe this is there might be a way where we could come closer to people who <clears throat> are not so or very limited, let's say, in critical thinking. So, are there mm, any questions uh, right now? Just let me see. I don't know. No, we have no question in the chat, but okay, maybe. We have some time to write down the questions. Yes. I don't want to. So next step is going to implement critical thinking in adult education. But first, we may. I don't see any no. questions so okay. far. Thank you. Thank you, Kia. Thank you, Kia. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, we have some conclusions uh, what um, critical thinkers need, um, what adult education may can do. And the next step is always to think about how can we implement that? Um, when we talked, me and Martin, when we talked uh, on, on this little workshop, um, we, we agreed, I think, that when we offer courses on critical thinking, no one will come. And that's just, it is a problem because <laughs> most people think they think critical, <laughs> critically and um, they don't see the need for that. Of course not. Um, and so the question is, in our courses, trainings, in, in our lectures, whatever different circumstances you work on, what can we do? How can we support foster and critical thinking for adults in adult learning? And I will make some suggestions, only suggestions. And uh, our idea is that in the during the group work, you go more into it and 
exchange and communicate about it. We will, we will, I think, um, tell you a little bit more. But so that you are not without any idea, I have some suggestions. And of course, I tried them all. <laughs> <laughs> and finally it worked, but not everything every time. Um, so one suggestion I like to reveal to you is um, the overall method is project work. <laughs> project work is a method um, that really encourages independent thought. It, it encourages discussions. Um, you get other perspective. It, there is no way out. Um, in, uh, in project work, in smaller groups, group work, every way of group work, uh, you need to express you personally. And um, this is really a good way um, to open up minds and to foster critical thinking. I, of course, I know that um, not in all lectures, not in all classes, not in all circumstances, um, project work and group work is possible. Sometimes it's just, it just doesn't work. That's okay, I think. That's absolutely okay. But we should take it as a really serious method um, to foster critical thinking because it is really a method that open minds. Um, <clears throat> I think you maybe use it, you maybe not, but project work, think about it. It, it really can, can, be, can have a very, very positive effect on the way how people think. Um, uh, there are, there's another method that is that encourages self-reflection. I don't know if you know it or if you have experienced that. Is keeping a learning journal, um, keeping a learning diary is is also a word for that. Um, I experienced it as as a participant um, within a longer course, and it was that was really something. Um, that was really something I personally, first of all, I said, oh, and then in the evening I should write something and I'm doing a journal and so, no, uh, but everyone did it, I did it, and <laughs> it was wonderful because I, it was the most, the highest way, let's say, the highest way of self-reflection I ever did. <laughs> so it really, really uh, had an, had a deep impact on me and, and the way I learn. I learned to learn with this learning journal, with this diary. I think it works um, for longer trainings. I have some courses that are only two days. So I would not say that the learning journal is, is an appropriate method there for fostering critical thinking, fostering open-minded. And so um, what I usually do at the end of a lesson, end of a day, end of a topic or so, I, I ask, so what did you learn? What are your, your, your main takeaways from this lesson? That's easy. Um, since some 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 years, I, I I put a little why to this question. What has been your main takeaways from this? And why? I want to know why. Um, if if I only ask for the main takeaways and the and the main lessons learned, then people say, "Oh, this was new to me," um, or they say, "Oh, yes, this part was interesting." And if you really ask for the why, then you, and face-to-face -face trainings, probably not in online learning, but in face-to-face -face trainings, you really can see how they start to think. Why was it in such an young Muslim by something? You really can see people think. It's, it's very interesting and it's not, there's no negative effect on that. I mean, if someone has no answer, then there is no answer. Okay, so what? No problem to me. Um, <clears throat> but that is a very, very easy thing to foster a little bit more self-reflection. And another um, met method 
that is very often used in adult education is brainstorming. Brainstorming is wonderful, um, individually or in a group. It is always a method that open minds. But I like to promote relevance. Relevance is really something. If I look Instagram or Facebook, relevance is is a crucial point, I think. Um, if I ask my participants to prioritize the results of, so the lists of the brainstorming, um, according to the relevance to the issue we are talking about, um, then they really deal with relevance and they need to decide and they need to think and they can discuss it. So brainstorming as itself is wonderful to open minds. But if you then say why or what is what is most important, what is less important, if you bring people to that, um, then you promote relevance. I think that is a nice way to do. And I need to come to this end, to, to, to my end here, but I have some more, two, two, two little more <laughs> suggestions. Um, they go out to our approaches. Um, so foster critical thinking, encourage for critical thinking. Um, you can use some several methods, but we, we have to reflect also on adult education and adult learning. We have to reflect on us as adult educators. I think that's really a point. Um, maybe we should think a little bit more different about our learning tasks. We have a lot of wrong right tasks. Um, they don't foster independent thinking, never. Wrong right is, is, is not fostering independence. Um, what is possible is to provide more sample solutions. So participants work on a topic <clears throat> and then they check their own solutions with your sample solutions. Not all the time, of course not, but sometimes, maybe, especially for learners who are not good in learning. Um, they, they need to learn this working with, with sample solutions. And if they learn it, maybe, um, they come more into learning more independently. So, but this is our task, but that, so it's not the problem of learning, it's our task. So what kind of learning task do we offer? So there we, maybe we should think about some more and different learning tasks. And um, we should promote the why and the why not. The usual way is what I do here right now is explain, 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 explain. <laughs> This is the usual way, and I think it's it's absolutely wonderful for for um, for a workshop like this. But if we have a little bit more time, if longer, then it is better not to explain too much. So, adult education is still hungry focused on us. We are the focus, and we are the middle of the world, um, and therefore we explain everything. But if we want to become more critical thinkers, uh, become yeah, get more people into critical thinking, that would be uh, correct, then they should explain the why. They, they need to learn to describe and they need, need to learn to, to communicate in a more analytic way. And that means we should shut up <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> Um, this is this is our way. This is what we can do for that. So, everyone who is in charge here, have a have a have. A, please look at the clock. Have, have. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> um, it was more or less by sudden, uh, but it's it's now really ten minutes after four. I was not sure if. It, really works but um so uh, thank you thank you for for uh for listening to me i hope it was interesting to you um i think now we do a little break yeah thank you so yes. much
Thank you so much. It was very, very interesting. And I hope so. Yeah, we will have a little break. Um, we will meet again at um, 20 past. So grab a coffee, um, you know, go yeah, have a little bit of fresh air maybe. And then we'll meet at 20 past four and continue with the workshop. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.